It is business as usual in the Dora dump site. Bad and man struggle to find anything valuable from the latest delivery in their territory. Dandora is home to all manner of waste from all over Nairobi, East Africa's most popular city. And not just that, it is home to another one million people. Waste and climate change may seem like separate issues, but what many do not realize is that they are actually very closely linked. The Dora dump site was declared full in 2001. 13 years later, 850 tons of waste are being deposited here every single day. Government's efforts to relocate the dump site have been futile, as this is what feeds over a thousand residents of this slum. This is our, our, our gold mine in Dandora. Their job? Picking valuables from the dump site for sale to recyclers. But this begs the question. Does it just offer too little money for just too much misery? Right now I'm on a rooftop in one of the buildings here in Dandora. And uh, on my right we have the Dandora dumping site, which is the largest dumping site in Nairobi. And it caters for the entire city. Uh, all the waste from re residential, domestic, agricultural, and even medical waste mixes all here in Dandora. And the project here is very amazing because uh, it caters for children who could suffer from gases that are being released from the landfill right here. So right now we are just going to zoom the dumping site, which is of over 30 acres of land. Due to incineration, a dark cloud of smoke is often surrounding the dump site, and a pungent smell which you can sense a mile away is often emitted. Uncontrolled dumping has led to sporadic carbon emissions. Our climate is in danger, and so is our future generation. When I grow up, I want to be an engineer, to have a good family. Is anyone doing something about it? Climate change here in Kenya is a harsh reality that has been given very little attention. We have droughts in Turkana, while at the same time we have floods sweeping away people in the city. Global warming is a fact that has been blamed in many parts of the world for climatic change. However, much as many people are aware of global warming, what they don't realize is global warming is a fact and a reality that is just in their doorsteps. Take for example the cars we use every day to work or to school. The Dora slums is famous for gangs that are giving the police a very hard time. It is famous for the dump site, one of the most polluted places in the world that feeds over a thousand dwellers of this Dandora slum. Welcome to Dandora slum and meet this gang with a difference that is fighting with a different tool and for a different cause to change the environment and change the climate and change the youngsters of Dandora. Meet Charles Gashaga, proprietor of the Mustard Seed Court. He uses this court that was initially a dumping ground as a model of the ideal Dandora. Every court, every place you have a dream like this. No place in Dandora that doesn't have something like this. Just a matter of an argument. Looking back to the starting point of this project was when politicians come and start talking so much about creative, uh, creativity of jobs uh, and job opportunities, and which after all they score in, they never veil their promise. But little did it just they talk to be high. They come up with an idea of what they would have been done for them by the those uh, okay, prominent guys, but failed. And they definitely they put it in on practice, being something out of one person's vision on particularly environmental conservation. Whereas we look at the most thing government talk about, uh, the basics of making the environment become a habitable and 
founder wa Master Street in CDO. Mzika chini na chairman, tuko na environment yetu, huli na kaa sivi zuri. For example, what are you doing in Kuzakulam? Kuko na evo, kutengeneza environment poor. Yani kufoti yetu na na the rich people. Kabla sio nima gari, ndiyo ni hizo mbili ndio atuzi ya kuona, sio ndio? Lakini kuishi kwa mazingira safi, hiyo tu ni nini ya mtu. Unaona end I I I I determine that na nile kazi nafanya ama nini, eh? Dandora imekuwa ikikashifio sana, kuna drug abuse, kuna gangsters, kuna nini. Sasa sisi hatutai tuibadilishe kwa kuwa tunaikashi kwa kuwa tumekaa mtu kajiwenye kama ni mambo na uizi na nini hawezi imaliza na kuwa kila mtu juu kwa kuwa kila mtu tena utakosa tena watu wa kugaba na ndiyo sisi tumeleta kitu kama hii na ndiyo tujaribu kuombe fans kutoka all over watu wale wanaweza jaribu kutusaidia tutelize hizi kama ni parking zile ziko dandora ziweze ku create jobs kwa mabijana when environment is nice then it means people are fully living when the environment is not uh, conducive, automatically there is danger, hazards of sicknesses, airborne diseases, water and kadalika. Hands on tools, what you are seeing standing here today as a project. They failed, they have not failed. The initiative of this project came up with the idea that we have a lying fallow place known as a dump site place and it is of much potential to our environment of our children and residents living here setting a project that will attract even people from far whenever they have any connection within this society to have a place they can host conferences they can have a playground for our children which is more safer and in any cause within the new local government offices we have None of the officers working there has ever thought of the well-being of our children. If they could have a plane ground, which is controlled, manned, and safe. The story of this group is very moving to any lover of environment. I believe being a member of this society, it is a challenge on my part to step up and inform people. Climate and environment may seem like separate distant issues, but they are actually closely, very closely linked. I History has it that Dandora was once a clean and well-organized suburb. In fact, in the early 80s, the World Bank funded the construction of drainage systems all over Dandora. But just where did the drainages go? No, because I can say it was a project of the World Bank. Drainages were running all over, roads were everywhere, parkings were everywhere, playgrounds were everywhere, everything was in place. But due to, I can say, maybe ignorance and time, things from late 80s, things started getting, getting worse, deteriorating. We start losing our drainages. Permanent meters start losing our playgrounds, our parkings. Slowly but slowly, until to the point that today, one of the darkest places in Nairobi.